In this problem, a boy fires a slingshot straight up into the air, and he's next to a tree, and the tree has some branches on it. And we're told uh, a little bit of given information here. This, the rock leaves the slingshot moving at 16 meters per second, and it hits a branch that's 11 meters above the ground, or above the launch point. So we have enough information to set up the problem. Let's say it's launched from right here, and it goes up and hits the branch right there. And we know that that's 11 meters up. So let's call this position down here 0 meters, and that position up there 11 meters. And when we say that, when we say 0 meters is down here and 11 meters up there, at that point we've decided that up is the positive direction. That means the acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared because the acceleration due to gravity is always down. And in this case, down is negative. So let's go ahead and write the rest of our given information up here. We know the initial position is 0 meters. We know the final position is 11 meters. And we also know the initial speed, v0, is 16 meters per second. Now, one thing we don't have here is the time. But we have an equation that doesn't require us to have time. There are a lot of different ways we could start off this problem. There's different approaches that would all give us the same answer. But there's one that will get us there in basically one step, even though we don't know the time. And that's this equation. v squared is v0 squared plus 2a delta y. And you'll notice I'm using y here again instead of x because I typically use y when I'm dealing with vertical motion. If you want to write delta x right there, that's fine. Just understand that it represents this distance here or that displacement from 0 to 11 meters. Now, I'm trying to find the final velocity. How fast is it moving when it hits the branch? So that's the final speed. That's what I'm trying to find. And I know the initial speed. I know the acceleration, I know the change in y, and of course I know 2. So I can just plug those numbers in. The initial speed is 16 meters per second. So I put in 16 meters per second, and that's squared, plus 2 times a, and a is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And you see that negative sign matters. We'll get an entirely different answer if we forget to put that there. So setting up the problem correctly getting all of these little details right in the setup is critical. So we have 2a, we need 2a delta y. And delta y is our change in y. That's 11 meters. It goes 11 meters up. That's 11 meters, and that's positive. Now we can do the math here. 16, is, 16 squared is 256. And notice that this meters per second right here also gets squared. So it's 256 meters squared per second squared. Plus, now look at the units on my next term. I have meters times meters, that's meters squared per second squared. That's also going to be in meters, meters squared per second squared. And I have 2 times negative 9.8 times 11, which is equal to negative 215.6 meters squared per second squared. So I've got 256 plus negative 215.6, or you could think of, it, think of it as 256 minus 215.6. And these are both meters squared per second squared, so I can combine them. They're the same type of thing. They're like terms. I just do the math. 256 minus 215.6, and I get 40.4 meters squared per second squared. Now be careful here. It feels like you're done. When you put in all these numbers and do all this arithmetic and get to an answer, there's this feeling of being finished right there, but you're not done there. And you can tell you're not done if you pay attention to the units. Keeping the units on your problem all the way through is helpful in this way. Meters squared per second squared, you should look at that and think, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for velocity, which is meters per second. And you should realize, ah, this makes sense because what I just found was v squared right there. To find v, I need to take the square root of that. And when I take the square root of this, I'll get the square root of 40.4, and the square root of meters squared per second squared will just be meters per second. So I take the square root, and I end up with 
and the units are meters per second. And that's my answer. It's a velocity at the end. By the time it reaches the top up here, or by the time it reaches the branch, is 6.4 meters per second.